What is up everybody, welcome back. My name is Tyler Potts and in this video we're gonna be covering parallax in just HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript and probably three or four lines. Now, um, this is what we're gonna be creating. This is a very simple like landing page you land on here. It's got your name, for example. It's got a link at the bottom. It's got this little YouTube thing here, which would be a link where it will take you to my YouTube channel and then the About Us. Now, as you scroll, as you can see, we get this nice little parallax effect. And what parallax is, is it's one thing moving and the other one moving above it. So as you can see the background, it's not moving at all, but this is moving above it. While this header is moving down, corresponding to us uh, scrolling, and this is moving up as we scroll. So as you can see, there's three different layers of parallaxing there. There's the background, there's this element and this element down here. And these are the three elements we're gonna be focusing on. So let's get started with the very basics and um, start with the background. So we wanna head over to our text editor, which I've created this very basic text editor, or um, I won't call it text editor, sorry, this very basic, um, I haven't created this text editor, that'd be incredible. I mean, I have created this very basic markup. So we've got a uh, basic default stuff, linking our SAS for our main CSS, then incorporating our um, little main about us just so there's a bit of content on there. Um, and as you see here, we've got this image uh, with um, background in it, which is just this image, a darkened image I stole off, well, don't install, I used off unsplash.com um, just to literally style up this basic stuff. Then we've got the main JS with nothing in it and uh, sorry, the SAS file with nothing in it. The main is what it's going to be compiled into. Now, you can write this in normal vanilla CS, uh, CSS. You just need to now to confer it again. It's very simple, but SAS is very easy. You can check out all the videos on my channel where we go over SAS and stuff like that. Now, without further ado, let's let's crack on. So, over in our markup, we want to basically start with the markup because uh, what we're going to do is start a live surfer quickly. So we're going to say live hyphen surfer with a dot, and it's going to start a surfer. So we can close that and this is what we've got here. So this little basic, so we want to create our header now, right? So just above this main section, we're going to write a header. And inside this header, we're going to have three elements. We're going to have a title. Oh, sorry, that's going to be H1 title. And it's going to say inside here, we're going to have Tyler. I'm going to have a strong element and it's going to say pots. Now underneath here, we're going to have a nav. And then underneath there, we're going to have a link, an anchor tag with free NAF links. So again, this is Emmet. It's built into VS Code. This one's going to say home. This one's going to say about a, a, a bot put. <laughs> I'll fix that in a second. And this one's going to say contact. So these are the basic things you'd normally have on your page. Um, the main elements anyway. Um, and then finally, we're going to have this YouTube button or YouTube uh, I'm gonna call it a YouTube pin which is gonna be in the top in which is gonna be the fit element on the bottom left of our header so in here I'm just gonna say you well, I'm gonna create a few things I'm gonna create a paragraph which goes say YouTube channel we're gonna have a another paragraph to say Tyler Potts because that's the channel name and then I'm gonna have one more paragraph saying check it out so these are just separate paragraphs. Let's close this so we know. And let's go over here. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let's delete the old CSS. And there you go. This is what we've got here. So, oh yeah, that also deleted the compiled. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Let's compile our SAS. So I'm using Node SAS. I'm going to open up a new terminal here. I'm just going to type in SAS. Again, you can use any pre-compiler. I expect you to already know SAS before CSS before we S CSS. Sorry, before we go on to any more. But if not, just you can do this literally in normal CSS. You just need to know how to confer, it, which is very basic. Um, SAS, and we're just going to say main dot SAS into main dot CSS. Hit enter, and that's going to basically create our file there. Let's delete that. Let's go over here and there you go. So this is styled still, but this is not. So this is just a basic uh, markup. Now let's head over to our main SAS. 
And as you can see, we've got a few elements. We've got this um, little reset here, which basically sets everything to margin zero, padding zero, a box size and a border box, because it's super useful, and sets the font for everything. Uh, we've also got the body width a min height of 4,000. And the reason we have that is because we need to be able to scroll because the whole point of parallaxing is to be affected by um, movement and our movement is to scroll. Now, this about, you can ignore, it's just basic styling. It literally just styles this little block here. Um, so let's cut that out and let's type in here header. Now, inside the header, we want this to be, um, we want this to have a height for size of 600 pixels because that's how high we want the actual header to be. We're then going to set the background image and the background image is going to be the URL and we're going to go dot slash images slash background dot JPEG. Now, if we come out of here and we say background size, we just want this to cover the whole background. So if we go back, and we refresh, oh, sorry, we need to compile again. So now I'm gonna run this um, again, but this time I'm gonna make sure it runs every single time we update. There we go, now it should be running and compiling every time we hit save. There you go. So now you can see this is there and it doesn't actually scroll yet. The background isn't staying where it is, it's moving when we scroll, which we don't want, we want it to stay still. To do that, we add a background property, a background attachment of fixed. Now, what this does is basically fixes it in place. So if we refresh and we scroll, as you'll see, the background now stays in place while everything else scrolls. Let's style up the rest of the page quickly. So let's style up the title. We'll say display inline block. We're gonna say, the background is equal to a 171717, a little very dark, dark gray. We're gonna have a padding of five pixels and 10 pixels just to give it a bit of spacing around so it's not completely touching the edge. And then we're gonna set a, a color of white, a font, oh, a font size of 60 pixels. That's quite big, but it'll look good. A font weight of 300, because we don't want it to have any uh, font weight, but in the strong, we're gonna give it a color of yellow, oh, if I can spell, and a font weight of 900, because you want it to be want it to be as bold as possible, because I want my last name to stick out most. Now, if we go back, you'll see this as styles there, but again, the rest of the page really isn't. So up here, let's quickly just say display flex, justify content center align items center hit save and you'll see this comes to the middle but so does all this and we don't want this but they're going to be separate elements inside this so let's go to our nav and just set position absolute and also on the header we need to set the position relative so they are rel positioned relative to the header and not the whole uh, website so we're going to set nav position absolute we're going to set the left to zero, the right to zero, and the bottom also to zero. We're going to display it as a flex, and we're going to justify the content center, and then align items center. Hit save, go back, and as you can see, it's down here. We're going to leave that down there for now. Now let's remove the YouTube pin. Let's say YouTube pin and let's say position absolute left 200 pixels from the left bottom we're going to say about 250 pixels from the bottom but we're going to set the width of 200 pixels the height of 300 pixels so the reason i'm doing this here so i've moved it i've made it go 250 pixels below the bottom but that's because we're setting the height on it at 300 pixels so it's going to be 300 pixels high, but it's also only go it's going to be only showing 50 pixels off the top, and that is going to be where we're going to have the first section of our our paragraph. So now in the p tags, we're going to set the colors equal to 1717. Oh, that's 181818. That's too light for me. <laughs> uh, we're going to set the text align to center, 
line height so now we want to set the line height equal to 50 pixels and the font weight 700 the reason we're setting line height to 50 pixels is because that's how much space we have um, showing at the start and we want it to basically sit in the center now that should actually have worked so you can see it's down there we need to add a background sorry let me add that underneath all here we'll set background color and we'll set to yellow so there you go now you can see that's looking good but again this is kind of not how we want it so you can see how it works so it's showing just this youtube bit here um inside the header but this also showing so we need to go onto the header and literally at the top just say overflow hidden and there you go but it's disappeared because we don't want it to show we want it to be hidden let's style these naf links up a little bit more too now so in here in side our naf tag we're going to say dot naf link and we're going to set the color equal to this slightly light very very light gray we're going to say padding 10 pixels 15 pixels a border bottom uh there we go border bottom of four pixels solid and then we're going to say ffce so so we're also going to set the same border down here but we're going to say equal to transparent the reason for this is because when we huffer sorry that is completely wrong this bit here should be transparent and then when you go into a huffer state we then want to set the border bottom color to be that so now as you hover you can see it now adds this yellow padding but if we if we didn't set this here and we set this in the huffer it would bounce these buttons would bounce let's also set in the naf link text decoration equal to none there we go looking good so now i think it's in place but again there's no parallax other than the background's parallaxing which is is not what we want we want everything else to move we want stuff and we also have some more content hidden down here which we need the page to really scroll to show it right so let's get the the title so this is where javascript comes in so css part was this background image and that's kind of cool right but we want to get to the real stuff so let's go over to our main.js which i created here and in here we're going to say window dot onload is equal to function and this is basically just going to basically say once the window is loaded do this function and we're going to get the two ends we'll say get title which is going to be equal to document dot query selector so you pass in your query so we need the header and inside the header we need the title because that's what we're grabbing let's duplicate this and let's rename this to the youtube pin header and this time we're going to say youtube pin now we've got those let's just console log them to make sure they work so we're going to say title element which is going to be equal to title and oh i need a comma there and this one's going to be the pin and i'm going to say youtube pin hit save come over here let's open up our uh console and as you can see they're showing there nicely so that's worked we've now got those elements now when it comes to um, parallax there is it's, it's still with movement movement off a page movement off the mouse you can parallax stuff from moving the mouse moving the page the parallax and we're going to be focusing on is when we scroll so there's a scrolling parallax and basically we want to know when we scroll we want this to move downwards and then we want this to move upwards now to do that we need to basically have we need to know every single time we we move a pixel and to do that you, we can use an event listener in javascript called scroll and we're setting it on the window because the window is what's scrolling so let's go function and inside this function we can console.log, not this.log, we can just log this.pageY offset. And what this is going to basically do, it's going to get how many pixels we've scrolled from the top of the page. If we refresh and we scroll, you can see we've scrolled 30 pixels. So we scroll back up, we scrolled back to zero. 
Now, if we scroll loads, you can see we've scrolled to 3,031. And again, all the way back to zero. So basically, this tells us what position we are currently scrolled to. And we're going to use this as a way to manipulate our um, our title and our YouTube path. So let's put it title and we're going to set style dot oh, hello style dot transform because we want to manipulate the translate Y property because we want to move it on the Y axis. And now in here, we're going to basically put two more um, uh, quotation marks and we're going to say this dot page Y offset divided by two and we're going to put a percentage sign here because we want it to be in percentages and the reason we're doing this dot page offset divided by two is because if it was divided by one it's going to this is going to move actually you know what let's just show you you'll see so let's hit save push enter and then as we scroll you can see how fast that's got it scrolls literally as fast as we scroll the page which isn't good that's why we divide it by two because we want it to be two less than or half of the effectiveness so now if we scroll you can see it scrolls a little bit slower which is perfect that now that looks really good as you scroll it like comes down with your page and it kind of keeps center now we want to scroll this so this little final part and this is super simple we're literally doing the exact same thing but we're saying youtube pin and we're going to add a minus here so let's go back and hit save now if we scroll you can see it scrolls but again this bit comes up so there's two things we could have done we could make this really tall so when we scroll it's thingy but we don't really want it to be that fast that's way too fast we want that to be way slower so let's say instead of defining it by two we define it by 10. now as we scroll you'll see it scrolls perfectly so once we get to here it's kind of in line there and all the elements are on top and then we can keep scrolling so it kind of, as you're scrolling away, I want people to see this. I want people to think, oh, he's got a YouTube channel. Let's click on it. So as I scroll away, you'll see it, it brings up more context. So it's like, hey, YouTube channel, it's called Tyler Potts. Check it out. Sort of thing, I guess. That's how I envision it working, how people would see per, uh, perceive it anyway. <laughs> anyway, guys, so that is literally all we've got time for today very very short video but i mean i'm hoping to do loads of these little short videos hopefully all at once so you'll get these daily um, and hopefully um, from this you can learn loads of different css and javascript tricks to do with front-end development and starting off with parallax in the next video i'm going to try and get some mouse movement on this so when we scroll that's cool but whams when we move our mouse left and right i want this to move if we move our mouse left i want this to move slightly to the right and this slightly to the left and that's what we're going to work on next in this video in this video in the next video thanks for watching everybody and if you did like the video then well you if you did like the video then like the video you kind of get it if you have any feedback drop it in the comments and obviously if you did really enjoy the video don't forget to subscribe it really helps me out um lastly don't forget to check out uh, my patreon page loads of awesome patrons and mass shout to them you're going to see those at the end of the video um patreon supports me make better videos more videos and also helps me get equipment for the videos like soundproofing because that's what i kind of need right now because my walls are very hard and sound bounces or bounces straight off them as you can probably hear in my audio quality but anyway guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets